Well, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Treehouse Village uh, webinar. This is about moving east. This is the next gen housing webinar, uh, which is going to have some information about Treehouse Village and some information about uh, from, uh, I've got some, some fellow members here with me today who are going to be sharing their stories of making um, big and small moves to become a part of this community. My name is Kate DeVried and I am one of the co-founders uh, along with my husband and our young son Dylan uh, of Treehouse Village. And uh, today's webinar is going to be begin with uh, just a really brief overview. What is co-housing? What is Treehouse Village? And then we're going to be getting uh, into the conversation um, that, I, that I mentioned around, around making the move. So uh, co-housing, for those who are new to co-housing, is defined as a form of intentional community where the physical structures, the buildings, and how the buildings are arranged on the site support the social architecture that of a healthy community, a healthy neighborhood. Or as this resident puts it, we're a small, old-fashioned, small, safe, uh, old fashioned neighborhood of modern energy saving homes where children can play safely, adults can work things out together, elders have neighbors who care, and where we can all work and play together. Specifically for Treehouse Village, our vision is a joyful, environmentally responsible, healthy, multi age co housing community in Bridgewater, Nova Scotia, Canada. And this vision combined with our three core values have driven all of the decisions that we've made as a project so far and uh, continue to throughout our development. Um, uh, we're committed to living more lightly on the earth. We are committed to, uh, to sharing uh, resources and joy and, and lives with our neighbors and being welcoming to all. And we are committed to creating healthy homes and a healthy, comfortable neighborhood for, um, for those who uh, are a part of this, this project. Bridgewater is located on the south shore of Nova Scotia. Um, it is located on the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq peoples. And uh, we will strive to live in peace and seek uh, means of reconciliation uh, as, we, um, as we make our homes on this territory. The town of Bridgewater itself is located uh, about an hour from Halifax, an hour and a half from the International Airport. And it's a town, a bustling town of about 9,000 people. It's a really good sized town for Nova Scotia. You can meet most of your needs there. And it's within, uh, yeah, not very far from beautiful beaches, UNESCO World Heritage Sites, uh, Acadian Forest, and many more wonderful natural features. The site itself is 15 acres in size. It's mostly uh, forested land and it will remain as mostly forested land even once our homes are built here. This, uh, this site image uh, shows that the homes are going to be clustered near the front and leaving most of the property as forest um, for us to enjoy. The neighborhood itself will consist of 30 private homes, all self-contained. Um, they all have everything you need for your basic needs, kitchen, dining area, bathrooms, bedrooms, laundry hookups. Uh, and uh, they are going to be clustered uh, as, as the co-housing definition suggests in a form that really facilitates the social community. So you have your privacy in your home and you're also part of this uh, really deliberately well-designed community neighborhood. The homes will be in the four buildings that you see here uh, in stacked flats. Uh, they're two-story buildings. 
Uh, and um, there's also going to be a big common house, over 4,000 square foot uh, common house, where uh, which are extensions of our own homes. So that's where we'll find the guest rooms, the playroom, the laundry room, the fitness room, the big dining area and kitchen for when we choose to share meals together, as well as a 900 square foot workshop for all that kind of play as well. The site will have gardens and natural playground and uh, parking for vehicles and for bicycles. Um, and we are still imagining and, uh, and planning what, uh, how, how that site is going to, be, going to be used. I wanna mention just a few other things. Uh, we are committed to ultra energy efficient um, design and building. So we are going for passive house certification which is a very, very high degree of energy efficiency. Um, we've been told we can heat our homes for less than $100 a year per home. Um, and this uh, is a win-win for uh, not just our pocketbooks, but also environmentally to have such a low, um, low impact in, in, in how we heat our homes. Um, we are also committed to being a multi-generational community. You saw that uh, in our vision statement. And in order to achieve this vision, we have reserved half of the homes for older households and half for younger households. And so of the 30 homes right now, 21 of those homes have been spoken for. We're at 70%, uh, which is a, a big milestone for us. Um, the 15 homes for the older uh, demographic have all been filled at this point, and so the nine homes remaining are reserved for younger households, which we define as um, those with children living at home or uh, where the adults are under 40. We are aiming to be complete uh, by 2022, which is actually next year, uh, by the end of next year, which seems incredible. Um, and uh, the price range for the homes is between 300 and $500,000. That includes HST. And for more detail about our pricing, including a pre-sales um, a pre-sales campaign that we have on right now, where there are discounts on units uh, until uh, May the 31st, you can check out our website for those details. And I'll come back to this at the end, but if folks are already eager to figure out how do you, how do you take the next step here, um, the next step is to schedule a virtual viewing where we'll take you on tour of the, of the property, a virtual tour, and help uh, answer the questions that you have about becoming a member. Um, and so you can find that schedule a virtual viewing button right on our website under the uh, buy a home page. So as I mentioned, my, um, my family uh, founded this project um, about two and a half years ago. Uh, this is new for us. We are not developers. We have never built a home before. And uh, we just really, really want to live in co-housing. We really want to raise our son in co-housing and uh, we wanted to live in a place that very deeply reflected the strong environmental and social values that we have. And that kind of housing didn't really exist uh, in Bridgewater uh, in Nova Scotia. Um, we found the, this concept of co-housing and realized there weren't any here. Um, and we love it here. We, we love this place. We're deeply committed to this place as well. And so we decided that if we want to live in it, we'll have to try to make it happen. And it's been amazing in the last two years, we've had now 20 other households um, fully step into this vision and help to co-create it and bring it to life. And um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's amazing that we are, yeah, together creating a small example of what we would like the world to be in this, on the scale of this small neighborhood. I wanted to just, uh, as we start thinking about, um, about the housing landscape and people being on the move, which is what we're going to be getting to in our conversation with uh, Meg and, and Mike today, uh, wanted to provide you with um, some observations about what's happening in the housing market here, 
um, people are coming from all different places. So I'm not sure what it's like where you are, but right now the uh, housing market is very hot in Nova Scotia. Um, there are people flocking to Nova Scotia and, and snapping up properties sight unseen. Lived in Nova Scotia my whole life and I can't remember a time when for sale signs would be up for just days before they would be have the sold sign on them. It's um, it's really incredible, and um, you know there are, there are uh, mixed um, mi mixed impacts of that for sure. Um, what uh, what we are hearing is that people um, are looking to move to Nova Scotia for the quality of life. Uh, a lot of folks have, um, you know, as a result of COVID, either because their work has become remote or because it's uh, called into question for them how they actually want to live and what's important to them, are seeking out places where they can live uh, a lifestyle that's more in line with their own values and dreams and um, that can be a healthy place for their, them to raise their, their families. Um, so yeah, what we're hearing is that people are finding, you know, their dollar is stretching further. You can get more house, more, more, uh, more value, um, here in Nova Scotia, um, you know, folks who can work remotely, you know, as long as the, the internet's good, which it is here in Bridgewater, they can work from wherever, um, they can drop the big commutes and they can spend more time with their families uh, you know, enjoying recreational opportunities, enjoying um, the natural world and being able to live closer to that is certainly um, something that we're hearing from prospective members. Nova Scotia has incredible natural beauty. Uh, you know, we're known as Canada's ocean playground and the ocean is uh, a, a big feature in a lot of people's lives here. Um, we also are known for our music here on the East Coast, uh, friendly people and, and climate, believe it or not. Uh, I can't tell you how many folks have moved to Nova Scotia and been pleasantly surprised with uh, how the weather has been for them here. Of course, that's all relative to where you're coming, coming from, but um, yeah, there's certainly a lot of play in all four seasons here. I think um, I want to also mention that Nova Scotia has become known as one of the safest places in the world in these COVID times. And while we certainly hope that COVID itself will fade, I think what won't fade is the culture that has created the safety here in this time where I believe that the reason that we're doing so well here is that is the deep care that people have for each other and their communities here. So, you know, this is what's happening now is reversing this trend that we've seen for years of people leaving Atlantic Canada and going west. And now people, uh, you know, that's shifting around, people are coming east. Um, and, and yet people are buying without a sense of the community that they're buying into, that they're buying a house in. And I think what we have to offer here with Treehouse Village, and you'll hear more today, is that it doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to buy a house that you have no idea what it's gonna be like to actually you know, interact with your neighbors and what the community will be like when you get there. Um, Co-housing and Treehouse Village gives you a chance to really get to know the people, get to know the place before you even step foot here. And so with that, uh, with that segue, I'm going to um, bring in uh, Meg and Matt. Uh, Matt, I knew I was gonna do that. Meg and Mike here. <laughs> Uh, who are making moves to be part of Treehouse. And so, um, yeah, Meg, I'm wondering if you can, let's just start with some introductions, like tell us, tell us who you are and, uh, and yeah, so Meg first and then, and then Mike. Sure. I'm Meg and I recently just moved back to Nova Scotia with my partner, Matt, so the confusion <laughs> of uh, Meg it. Meg and Matt is easy to roll off the tongue, but uh, we just moved back in November from Sacramento, California. And before that, we were living in Vancouver. Um, and uh, we are now able to work remotely. And so I work as a coach and entrepreneur, mainly working with folks uh, in crisis intervention and folks who are working uh, on progressive campaigns or are progressive candidates, uh, mostly in the US. And uh, 
surprisingly, crisis intervention skills really uh, mirror or match really well with that work. And I'm really grateful to now be in Nova Scotia able to do that work remotely. Um, yeah, so that's just a little bit about me. Are you okay? Yeah, who are you, Mike? Uh, I'm Mike McKenzie. I've been, I've lived in Nova Scotia all my life. Uh, I grew up in Cape Breton um, and now I live in Dartmouth, which is the neighbor city to Halifax. Um, so I live here with my partner, Emma, and our two young girls, uh, Tilly and Rose, who are one and three. Um, and we own a house in Dartmouth and I'm a school teacher, conveniently teaching at the high school, which is walk down the road. Um, so we're really, we're playing the young family game. We're just, I mean, trying to spend as much time as we can with our, our two young girls while still um, building our careers or finding meaning in our careers and fixing up this old bungalow that we live in. Um, so yeah, that's us. Thank you both. Yeah. So Mike, um, you know, you've, it sounds like you got a pretty good there uh, in the city. You've got um, you've got a house. You've got a secure job. Um, you know, can you tell us a bit about your decision making, like when it comes to treehouse? Like, why why leave that? You've got a good thing going on there. Yeah, and that is funny because it there was this uh, like this transition period right before we had kids. You're spending a lot of time thinking, do we want to buy a house? Are we going to stay in the city? And then we sort of committed to be like, no, we, we like what the city life offers us. Mostly that was walkability um, and our careers were here. Um, and it is, uh, there, there are a lot of great aspects uh, to it. So originally when Treehouse was presented to us, that's because my, my partner Emma worked with Kate and Leon um, and just had the utmost uh, respect and admiration for those two individuals. So when they were piloting a new project, uh, we wanted to support them. And eventually it came down to like, hey, is this right for us? Um, and that was one of those classic pro or con lists in front of you um, of like, here's what we have, here's the decision that's in front of us. Um, and to be honest, the big one that drove me initially was a new house, particularly passive solar. Um, so in my life, I am really looking to free up as much time to play, um, trying to have that work-life balance. And renovating a home is really work for me. That is a, that is a work. That is not play for me. That is work. Um, so having a brand new home uh, was, was big. And I, me and Emma are both uh, have strong environmental values and sustainability mindset. So being passive solar was also... That was a that was a big star and something that we can't afford on our own. And that was the first uh, inkling into, well, you don't have to do everything on your own. Um, but that initially uh, was the big, uh, big decision maker. And the secondary was the yard I, where I grew up in Cape Red. And I'm real grateful for my upbringing, which was uh, open the door and go play. Um, and I did want to provide that for my girls. And initially that was. That was like, I look at where we're at and we have a nice yard and it works for a one and three year old, but it's still, it's bound to get in the car and maybe going to the community park. And I see, especially as they get older, I, I didn't want them running through these streets. It, it, it would be fine. It's, it's still great, but um, that was a, that was a big decision maker. And now it's funny looking back because we have been part of Treehouse for, for two years now. So trying to put my, my head into what we were initially making decisions on um, versus all the things that have come to fruition and all that I've learned about co-housing and, and, and Treehouse over the last two years. But um, we were ready to move to a rural community uh, and not rural, to a smaller community. Uh, we, weren't, we weren't bound to the city. And I guess the last thing I would say is the job was one of those big ones because Treehouse offered a better house, particularly that aspect of going outside, passive solar, that's what we don't have. I viewed it as, as being able to free Emma and up and my, for more play in our lives and work-life balance. Um, and a mind shift that happened was about building a lifestyle, choosing a lifestyle 
And then my career is still a choice there, but it was like choosing lifestyle first. And and Treehouse is going to be a better life. It is a better lifestyle. So that was some insight into our decision making process. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Mike. And um, you know, it's that those are big decisions. And I know you've you and and Emma have had your your pros and cons lists that you've uh, looked at over the years to make to make that decision. Um, Meg, you've made a big move recently, and lots to consider in that. Can you tell us? Um, you know, you've just moved across uh, across North America from one side to the other. Um, and you were brand new to Treehouse when you made that move back in uh, November. Can you tell us a bit about uh, what it was like to, you know, to be already a new member of Treehouse at that time and, and how the community was in, in supporting that move? Yeah, uh, it was hugely supportive. And just for context, uh, Matt and I, both our families are here in Nova Scotia. Um, but even just uh, without that, there's something about Nova Scotia that we just felt a real pull to kind of for what you were saying, like the safety of it, but just the community here, um, both us having spent a lot of time here, it, there was, there's something unique about the community. And um, that was reflected even in the support we received while prepping for this move home. Uh, so for example, uh, we had all our logistics planned out to get our ourselves from Sacramento uh, to Nova Scotia, which uh, you can imagine has a lot of moving pieces, a lot of components. Uh, and we had just reached out to Treehouse Village as we were planning this move. And it was Scott and Becky, shout out to them, who we jumped on a call with because they had also just made basically the same exact move from very close to where we were in California uh, to Nova Scotia. And uh, just the reassurance uh, in looking at all the details with them uh, and them actually helping us mitigate our plan. So we were saving money and saving time and saving energy was huge. Uh, and it, it just made the trip a lot easier having just that initial connection piece. And then even just when getting here, um, as we were still exploring Treehouse Village, it's been as it is with Nova Scotians or people living in Nova Scotia, there's just such a um, intention to be connecting with each other. And uh, it has been so nice to get down to Bridgewater and see and hang out with you, Kate, and the folks in Bridgewater, and then Mike and Emma having us over to their place, not having ever met us. <laughs> like, it, it's just, uh, uh, the community component, which is the main catalyst for us coming back to Nova Scotia, is so reflected in this group at Treehouse Village, and we felt it from the very beginning of our exploration time um, and to now. So um, it's made the transition a lot easier because moving's always a bit of a feat. Um, and I will say, even though this was a cross country trip, this is one of the smoother transitions we had. And I really do attribute it to all the support Matt and I have had in the process from Treehouse Village folks. Nice, yeah. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, that story, Meg. So you, you and Matt are in Halifax now. And my understanding is that that's not necessarily your final final destination, final resting place. Um, can you tell us a, a bit about what you are seeking and how, uh, to what extent Treehouse Village uh, ticks some of those boxes? Yeah, um, it isn't our final spot. Um, we're glad to be here because my parents and sister are here for right now, but um, they're not gonna be here in the next couple of years. And as we're looking and have been looking at what we want, um, longer term, it has come back to having a close community. And uh, one of the things that was so funny when we, because it, Kate, you were the person who kind of planted this seed in my head years ago. <laughs> and uh, so Matt and I have always kind of been eyeing co-housing. It's been on our radar. We were thinking about 
looking at co-housing in California for a while before we realized we wanted to be in Nova Scotia. Um, and for me, I really wanted to be in the woods or uh, close to nature. That was like a really important piece for me. And Matt really loves being able to walk or bike to amenities because he he loves active transportation and, and that's something that's really important to him. And when we went on to the Treehouse Village website when we were first exploring, it blew our minds that Treehouse Village was both in the woods and within walking distance to amenities. <laughs> it's like a really unique, it's a really unique thing. Um, Cause we, we really thought like, is this gonna exist? Like where we get both of these uh, things. So that was huge. Um, and I, I love Bridgewater too, having spent some time in Bridgewater, the progressive town, um, the sustainable initiatives and the values really align with uh, what I, care about and um, the change making spirit it just is really alive in Bridgewater uh, and it, it feels like there's a lot that um, this town and this community is capable of making happen uh, and Treehouse Village being one piece of that um, so that's what we've been looking for as we look long term at what we want to be a part of and putting our energy and our roots into yeah thanks mm. um and so mike you've you've been you and your family have been a part of treehouse for quite a bit longer you joined uh, i think about two years ago back when there was a clear vision but uh, very few knowns uh you know you and your family definitely were early adopters to this to this vision and you know now we're at a point there are many more certainties uh we have the land we have the design we have you know, 70% of our neighbors, um, you know, there's a lot more that's known. And by the end of next year, you and your family are going to be living in, in Treehouse. Um, so I'm curious to know what has happened during this development phase that has given you a glimpse and glimpses into what life is going to be like for your family uh, after you move in. Yeah, I would say, um, Initially, when I was talking about our decision making and how a lot of it for me was rooted in the house and having that piece of property and that open door policy for my kids. Um, and as I've it, what co-housing was sort of the unknown to me, I didn't come into this project familiar with co-housing. and it, it really didn't impact my decision making early on because um, that was that was an unknown. But as I've been part of the project for the past uh, two years, that really has proven to be where the magic is. Um, so, uh, co-housing has just demonstrated to me what a model of, uh, living together that I'm, I've, I've so enjoyed participating in and can't wait to actually, um, to let it play out. Uh, so there's, there's been, there's just been lots of aspects to it. If I could, uh, I mean, reflect when we say when we're buying this house in Dartmouth, like so much intention into the house you're buying. And then you don't like, you just hope the rest works out. Like I, I had never thought previously about community as, uh, as, as some, it was just a byproduct of all these other things I was doing in my life. So, you mean, I have a work community and a school community and we have friends and we all build community, but I was, it was sort of a byproduct of other things I was doing. So the, uh, the intentionality of the community we're building has just, it's just really been great. I mean, in some ways, even being part of Treehouse the last two years, it's been, a, it's just been a good source of even meaning in our lives. Like you feel like working with other people, you, I have this sense of contribution I didn't have. I wasn't even, uh, didn't even realize was lacking because I just wasn't on my radar. So it was almost like a, it's almost like this unknown you, I didn't know until I was part of it and now that I am I almost can't see it any other way it's 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 become a lens for um, my decision making but I would say too it's like I feel really lucky about all the wonderful things that are happening but because I have an inside look I know it's not luck I know it's the hard work that's that's happening uh, behind the scenes by so many dedicated members so um yeah, I guess I would say is that originally getting in, it was the home and now it's the community um, and just 
these people that you form relationships with. I've been so impressed about our ability to transition online. Like there were people that I, in the community now that I get to spend time with because they're in Nova Scotia, but even people that are in the United States or across Canada that now you've, uh, you form relationships with. Um, yeah, and it does, it comes down to a feeling. I just feel, uh, I feel really good about it, about, putting my kids in that position. I feel like I'm doing something good for my, for my family um, and the people that I've got to connect with and the experience so far, I look forward to raising my kids with them and, and growing with them. And it's like the, the, it's still an unknown when, when we grow together, there's just, a, there's just a ton of potential. I hadn't seen that before. I hadn't been part of something um, that had so much potential, that has done so much work and still yields so much potential moving forward. So um, I don't try to think, uh, yeah, it's given me a glimpse into that when the, the classic, when you're with uh, people that are looking to make a difference and looking to have fun, but work hard and, and create, it's been really, uh, yeah valuable to me and i know to my family just to be part of that from the ground up it's like you're in a i was i never had that before in my life it was a very unique experience and it's been extremely meaningful yeah i think you know we've had this conversation uh, i think it was camp we camped on the land uh mike's family and um caitlin's family and my family camped on the land last summer and we were talking about how like this, what a gift this is to give to our kids, right? Like this is, this is really being very intentional about the kind of village we want to raise them in. And uh, I still remember you saying, Mike, like, and this is a gift to yourself. Like you, you think you're going to be a better dad, you know, you're going to be a better person by living in this place too. And yeah, I did that, that kind of stuck with me as well that I don't know, being the parent of a little kid right now, like so much of my decision is about what's good for, for him. Um, but I, I see it as having ripple effects, uh, certainly to my life as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, really looking forward to that. Um, Meg, tell me, uh, tell me what, how you make decisions. Do you use your, your head, your heart, your gut, uh, what, uh, how do you go about these? You know, this is, these are big decisions. That's a right? great like, question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's so funny because uh, like Matt and I have totally different decision-making processes, which is both good and <laughs> challenging uh, and really, really helpful because I, I would be a heart person. I go with my gut, my heart. And Matt, thankfully, uh, is a very... Uh, logical decision like has all the mapping out of everything considering all components uh, and so um as we've been looking at treehouse village it's been really helpful to have both of us looking at it and uh supporting each other to take the other approach <laughs> um but yeah i'd say for me it's i go with my heart first um and thankfully, Matt goes with uh, the logical plans <laughs> to keep us grounded. <laughs> nice. nice. Yeah. So what about you, Mike? Well, I've got to spend some time with uh, with Matt and Meg, too. And I see a similar contrast in <laughs> our, our decision making is that I like to use my my wife's head and, and then use my gut. But I it's not it's you know, I mean, I definitely use both. We definitely we thought a lot about it, but. I would say that there was something uh, when initially making the decision, I was like, I haven't had this opportunity before. Like if I don't take this opportunity, what am I, what am I potentially passing on or what am I looking for? Like, I, I don't know. I didn't have many other opportunities come to me like, Hey, we're doing this really progressive, innovative project. Do you want to be a part of it? And I want my answer to be yes. And to the other opportunities that are come my way in my life. But those are the things. Eventually, that was my gut being like, this is right. This is something you say yes to and see where it goes. And I want to keep that openness to future decisions that I know are going to come my way because of the one I've made to join Treehouse that has then opened me up to other 
more innovative, fun opportunities. And I know it'll continue to do so. So I'd still, I'd say gut, but a little head in there too, maybe, I hope, I think. <laughs> oh. Thanks, Mike. And thanks, Meg. Um, that that draws uh, to the end of our, our conversation time together today. I um, want to let folks know if you, whether you're using your heart or your head or your gut to decide about getting to know Treehouse, I'd like to let you know, regardless of how you make that decision, uh, how, how to go about it, uh, how to go about taking a, a step in. So the next step would be to schedule a virtual viewing. Um, that will be likely with me and uh, we will kind of, I'll give you a more in-depth tour than you had today about um, all things Treehouse. So um, that you can find the, the schedule of virtual viewing button on our website under the buy a home page. I think there's a few other places it exists as well. So click on that um, and uh, I will be in touch with the next step from there. Our website also has a lot of information, a lot of good stuff on there. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, like check out the blog. You'll hear, you know, more stories written in the, you know, from our members about their decisions and what they're looking forward to and all that kind of stuff. Uh, 